the teams right next to me, they're at Berkeley, they're at JTU, they are at Columbia, at Princeton, at MIT. Um, so, and the two other people from my school that also made it with me are currently at UPenn and Harvard. So my name is Ritam Ganguly. I am a student at Brown. Um, I am a current sophomore, going to be a junior next year. And um, I guess the program I'm talking about today is Simmer. Uh, Simmer is the Stanford Institute of Medical Research. So it's a medical biology, medical sciences research program that Stanford has um, over the summer. And it's a really cool program because it's one of the few programs where they match you directly with a, um, with a researcher, um, which is most often either professor or PhD or a doctorate um, who is working on either wet lab research or dry lab from the bioengineering program. And you actually get to work towards building something. Um, so as a, I guess, philosophical overview, um, Simmer has two components. So there's a wet lab component and also a bioengineering component. Um, so if you're in the wet lab component, that is a five day a week program um, for 40 hours a week. And if you're in the bioengineering bootcamp, then it's three days a week. Um, so it's a bit more flexible. So if you're in the wet lab program, um, then typically it's what it sounds like. So you do more wet lab kind of research. And I think they're grouped into subgroups like immunology, cancer research, so on and so forth, um, stem cell research. And you work correspondingly on a project that a, that's a current lab is working on. You kind of just tag on there, but you also get one-on-one -on -one interaction with the professor, which is super useful. Um, for the bioengineering program, you work with groups of students, um, groups, um, it's about groups of four. And it's interesting because you get to formulate your own project and find your own clinical need and um, attack it and make a solution there. It's just a, it's a small terminology in the research sphere, but a wet lab is where you're working more hands-on. So the wet kind of comes from the chemical component or bacterial component. So you'd be working with culture or media. You'd have, it's a typical thing when people think of research, scientists with gloves on, pipetting, you know, mixing solutions, so on and so forth. Um, dry lab is more either analysis lab, or it can also be like engineering predicated lab. So if you're building a bioengineering device, for example, you'd be working more with like Arduinos, breadboards, um, you'd be building like prototypes and that necessarily wouldn't involve the, um, involve like, you know, wet lab components like pipetting mixtures or making cultures. So for this summer, really, I only applied to Simmer. Um, and I also had a side, um, like a wet lab thing going on. Um, so I liked Simmer bioengineering in that it gave you flexibility. So it was only, like I said, only three days a week. So it gave you flexibility to pursue other summer projects as well. So if you were working on something else, then you could do it like four days a week and then Simmer could be three days a week. Whereas the wet lab por por uh, portion of Simmer, which was five days a week was more time intensive. So it was more like this sole project you were working on. Um, and also, um, obviously you get like a stipend, um, you get paid for it. It's a pretty good deal. And it familiarizes you with Stanford's campus and its facilities. So um, very useful there. Simmer, it, it, it honestly, okay, so what's nice is that they give you the stipend, so it doesn't have like housing. Um, so they give you the stipend for transportation. And um, that, so they give you, I think around $500. Um, if you are a top applicant, you get something called an Amgen scholar, um, scholarship. So that gives you like $1,000. So really like you're, you're all taken care of. So you shouldn't have to worry about water transportation. Um, and there's also Stanford shuttle that comes from like, so I, I obviously went to Irvington, that's in Fremont. So there's a Stanford shuttle that comes right near Warm Springs. Um, so it's very, it's very convenient. Um, from the actual, like the, the social aspect and everything um, and the food aspect and everything. So Simmer does a really good job of integrating social, the social life into your experience. So every day you have, I think, I think it's actually like, it's either every day or every, like once or twice a week or something, but pretty regularly you have like all Simmer lunches and this like, big place they bring in food from outside and it's like it's actually really good food compared to dorm food and stuff it's really really good um, they, they spend a lot of money on it and um it's, it's really like a nice like very cool social scene um everyone like kind of talks chats like, like there's this huge friend groups everyone's big at a table and like you guys are all talking and chilling um it's it's really it's, it's really like nice um it's like what you'd expect from like your typical close-knit college experience um and because Simmer's is like a fairly smaller ish group it's about 50 ish people um, it's good. It facilitates bonds, and it's 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 not so big that you don't know everyone, and it's awkward. But it's not so small that there's a small limited friend pool to select from, or it gets boring. So that's really nice. Um, I love bioengineering especially because 
we, like I said, you worked in teams of four, but there's lots of, um, there, there's lots of collaboration in between different teams too. So we'd all critique each other's pitches. We would like talk to each other. We would have like our workstations near each other. So we'd see each other as we like kind of walk by back and forth. And it's really cool to see because a lot of like some people work in a biomechanics project. Some people are working on a myocardial infarction project. Um, so we were working on the cancer project. So as we were kind of walking by, everyone has these different projects and solutions and you kind of, you know, pitch things, help people improve. So that, that's, that's a super cool component as well. Um, and Simmer actually has um, a couple like really like nice formal, I, I think deep dinner, was it, it was like dinners or lunches or whatever, but you all get in these really fancy rooms and tables and you all eat and it's like a big presentation. It feels all fancy and formal, which is really, really cool. Um, and there is, at the end, there's like a big similar to like graduation day where everyone um, has their own poster, like not graduation day, but like an abstract presentation where everyone like has posters of their research, presents it. Um, and it's, it's super cool. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. a bit of a double-edged sword, but I really, really loved being able to work hands-on to solve a clinical need that you develop. So um, this is a bioengineering component. So most other components in every, virtually every other research program, you're tagging onto a research experiment. So it's not your original methodology. It's not your original um, novel idea of pursuit of analyzing a problem and getting there. So it's not very cradle to grave. It's more of a, of a um, experienced researcher has said, you know what, I have this, whatever, protein I want to optimize, I've all done research into it, and you're going to help me do a couple of the protein optimization steps. So it's like experiential, but not really. Um, similar by engineering was cool because you work with teams to, from scratch, it's very cradle to grave. So you see, this is the problem I want to work on. You decide on which problem you want to work on. You hone in, you look at the solution space, um, you look at the um, competitors on the market, you see how you can better design a device, you meet with doctors and everything. So it's very, it kind of feels like a startup. And I really like that because I have a bit more of an entrepreneurial bent personally. Um, so I really like being able to merge the two because it, it seemed like it was very, it was, it was more of a bioengineering, bio design kind of bio innovation bootcamp. So it had both engineering components, but also like we had like pitch meetings and we had to do both a business pitch deck as well as like a scientific research methodology uh, deck. So it was very, it was, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience there, but that also um, served as a bit of a, um, and a challenge because we did have to work in teams of four. And although that's great, um, we definitely came into big conflicts. Our team, um, definitely the, 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 in, in the moment, I did not enjoy it because we all had different visions of what projects we wanted to pursue. One of my teammates wanted to pursue something with spasticity and um, like neuroscience related. I want to pursue something with cancer detection related. My friend wanted to do something pediatric related. So there, there was a lot of, um, I guess, uh, a lot of uh, collaboration, creative discussion, so on and so forth. But looking back, it was, it was a really good introduction to working in teams, especially with a uh, large scale pro uh, project. But ultimately, like all, all went well, we, we settled on um, a solution space that kind of combined aspects of something all of us were interested in and went in with a broader solution that we all were happy with. So I, I guess that, that, that would be what I would have to say for that. Simmer, it's, I, I personally heard about it when I was in like middle school, early high school. Um, so it's a program that's, um, it's, it's, it's unique in that you don't pay for it. They actually pay you a stipend and you get hands-on research with professors, um, or, you know, researchers. And that was important to me to get some like wet lab experience or, you know, dry lab experience, engineering experience, um, and get that kind of exposure. So it's, it's, it's something I heard about, I found online, um, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so that, that that's how it got on my radar. I, I know a lot of most people that have heard about it either hear about it through word of mouth or they hear about it from a teacher or friend. When I was younger, around that age of like middle school or high school um, or early high school, I wanted to do like research and lab research, but um, especially a lot of people that are interested in biological sciences are limited by this, where it's like you can't work legally in BSL2 labs unless you're um, 16 plus. So I obviously like there's two routes. Many people, they, you know, I, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, reaching out to professors and cold emailing them and getting some kind of opportunity. Um, but there are also like structured programs that provided for you and that kind of shortcut the process and the pre-selected projects that, you know, you can for sure work on. So Simmer was one of the few that actually did that. And there are lots of programs out there that are more um, pay to play, so to speak, where um, they're more like, they're, they're more advertised as like educational, like boot camps and you don't actually have to do research, but you have to pay like thousands of dollars and it's more of like a stick on your resume, but you don't learn too much experientially from there. Um, so I like that similar kind of deviated from that. And it was like a program that pays you a stipend in addition to giving you actual experiential learning. So I definitely know that a lot of people, um, like this, this is my like 
like d disclaimer my personal thoughts, but I suspect this is what's true. A lot of people that are like pay to play summer programs at colleges where if they want to attend those colleges, they'll say, okay, if I pay like $5,000 and take classes here, they'll help boost my chances. My personal opinion is it doesn't really. Um, and I wouldn't highly recommend that. Simmer is one of the few um, programs that I think would actually help you get into the college, um, get into Stanford specifically, because it's held at Stanford. You're doing research in the facilities. You're working with professors and researchers in the facilities. And for most people, you can get your professors that you're working with to write your recommendation letter, which um, counts a lot more when you're applying to that college specifically. And it counts more when you've actually personally known the professor and you've done research with them, as opposed to they've known you for a short period of time, or they've just taught a class that you're generally a student of. Um, how I think it played for me specifically, um, so my college story is a little bit different, but um, when I was in high school, at least, I was an early decision applicant to Brown um, for the PLME program. So my, like the PLME program is a BSMD program. So my whole thing was I wanted to do medical engineering and um, I wanted to focus my undergrad more on engineering. So I wouldn't have to worry about MCAT medical school requirements. So Simmer obviously helped my application there when I wanted to prove the case for why I should want to do this and um, bring something unique to the field of medicine. Um, as far as getting into um, Stanford itself, so I did end up getting accepted to Harvard and Stanford for their bioengineering programs. Um, I don't know how much Harvard it would have had an impact, but it definitely um, played some role in my application, I'm sure, because it proved the case for I've done bioengineering, I've done research, I've been through the cradle degree process. For Stanford, I definitely think it helped because I got the person um, at Stanford to help write that recommendation letter for me. Um, so that was, that was profoundly helpful. Um, it, it definitely, definitely gave me an insight into that. Um, as far as my friends who are alumni of the program, um, it's, it's been kind of all over the place. So, um, two people from my group, one is at Harvard, another one is at, um, I'm forgetting. She's, she's somewhere, she's somewhere on the East coast. Um, I'm, that is escaping right now. Other people, um, alumni from the teams right next to me, they're at Berkeley, they're at JTU. They are at Columbia, at Princeton, at MIT. Um, so, and the two other people from my school that also made it with me are currently at UPenn and Harvard. So their their alumni is pretty generally go to like pretty good places. Um, and for the most part, as far as I know, most of them get recommendation letters from the professors that they work with, and most of them um, do talk about it to some extent in their essays. So I definitely say it does help, um, especially because again, you're doing hands-on research and you're having a professor vouch for you. Um, personal recommendation wise, um, I, I think a lot of people mess up in their applications because they underestimate the importance of the, um, of the personal component of their applications. So a lot of them overestimate the importance of their grades or academics, their other achievements. Um, and most people that I know that got rejected tended to focus their essays more on like bragging of like, this is what I've done. But I, I think Simmer cares um, beyond, like Simmer as opposed to a lot of other summer programs out there cares more about personal factors. Um, I like, it's, it's a very, it's a very, like, very, very cliche advice, but it's like, be as can be as candid and genuine as you and as earnest as you can be in your essays. A lot of people tend to when they when they sit down to write an essay, they kind of think they kind of write it more like an a paying essay. So they use like, they try to write it super formally, super structured paragraph style. Um, and it's, it falls like a basic format and you can tell it kind of sounds reversed. Um, and I think essay readers and missions officers can really tell that. Um, and this applies to college and stuff too, but I'm, I mean, this, this would especially apply to similar, I guess, too. Um, so I, I would try to deviate away from that as much as you can. Thank you.